What I'm about to tell you today, if you guys can give me your mind, will change your life forever. Till I collapse, I'll be moving too fast. Got my foot up on the gas, full throttle till I crash. I'm back with the vengeance. You gonna see me here. Guys, today's gonna be some good shit. I'm just telling you, make sure you have something to write with today, please. You guys are gonna have more notes and you know what to do with, but you guys are gonna be some bad ass son of a bitches. Today is gonna be about public speaking. That's the main deal today. This is gonna play out in a lot of different areas. I want you to understand um, the power of what you're about to learn, okay? Number one, run a team. Secondly, hey, how about have a one-on-one -on -one, you know, conversation with someone that you're wanting to get something from or do something with and then that person being like, yeah, you know what? I want to do this with you by the way that you speak. And then also being able to actually, I was going to say like build a brand. Everybody write this down for a minute. If you want to build a personal brand, everybody just write down the word personal brand. This is guys, listen, I'm going to tell you the, I'm going to, listen, I'm going to tell you the secret, build a personal brand. Listen to me. I don't, I know you guys work for a company. I know you do. Okay. Um, I work for the Elliott group, right? I have a personal brand and then I have a business. Okay. Do you ever hear me going around and I talk about my company, my company, my company, and most of the time I will deliver things that come from Andy Elliott because that's my personal brand. You know, I'm just going to make an example. If you work for another company right now and that company is called ABC, uh, whatever, and you keep saying ABC, 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 ABC. You're building their business brand. You're not building your own personal brand. You need to build your personal brand. I want to explain one thing that no one can take away from you is your personal brand. If you got backstabbed, you got fired, something happened today, something crazy in your life happened, and you had to walk away and go and go get another opportunity or go do something. I'm going to tell you, if you got a personal brand, you can go do anything you want. People will pay you millions of dollars. I had a guy just wire me a hundred grand for one hour to be one-on-one -on -one with me about his business. Okay. Our company will run about 200 million this year. Now I want you to understand 200 million, not, not, not a thousand, not a million, but 200 million. How do you get to personal brand guys? Does anybody see what's on my, what was my shirt say? Elliot, I'm going to teach you how to be a public speaker, but it, it's a personal brand. Now my business just happens to be the Elliot group too. Cause I like to do everything together, right? Like it just happened to work out that way. But notice guys, have you ever seen me without an Elliot shirt ever? No, you don't fucking see me without an Elliot shirt. I want you guys to understand something wherever you go, you know, when I, I pack, you know, what's in there, Elliot. I'm like, huh, should we wear the black Elliott shirt today or the fucking black Elliott shirt today? Which one? Occasionally, I'll wear a different color, but most of the time it's black. I'm going to explain why I'm telling you this. There's a thing called social media. And you're going to, and, and today the stuff that I'm going to teach you is going to allow you to do a couple of things. Number one, blow your social media to pieces. Blow, blow it up. Guys, social media, get in it. It's free. It's free. It's free and the whole world can know who you are. I'm going to ask you a question really quick. Are you worth knowing? Do you have value to bring to the world? Okay. Get your ass on social media, but I, but a lot of you guys don't like it. I don't give a shit what you like to do. I know what you need to do. You need to bring value to the world. The problem why people don't bring value to the world is because they're afraid and scared. And also that's the reason why people aren't good at public speaking too. So I just wanted to tell you guys that listen to me, number one, I would love for you guys to build a personal brand. That's not what this call is about, but if you can learn how to speak, you can learn how to talk, you can learn what I'm going to teach you today. I think you guys are going to find the courage to go build a badass personal brand. Now, listen, hey, write this down. This is important. Four out of five millionaires work for someone else. I need you to know in my company, a lot of my team, they, they work for me and they are millionaires. I have given them an opportunity to ride with me and to go hard. I need you to understand there's two roads that I want you to look. There's an, there's an entrepreneur and an intrapreneur, and you can build a personal brand doing both. Okay. So don't ever let, you know, don't ever think like, well, you know, like I don't work for my own business. I don't give a shit. I don't care. You're still an entrepreneur. I let my team that works for the Elliott group 
they built, they wear Elliott shirts and they build their own brand and their identity in the Elliott group. And that's their personal brand in our company. My, my company isn't about Andy Elliott. It's about the Elliott group. It's about us as a team, you know, shit, that's attractive. You know, I've seen a lot of people that are individuals that are badass, but I think couples are, ba- are more badass when there's two of them. Okay. I like stuff like that. Like, so my point is, is an entrepreneur works for a company and they blow that company up. Okay, an entrepreneur, they're in a company, they don't own it, they don't have the liability, they don't have the risk, but they, they, they run the company or they're building the company, they're a needle mover. Okay, you must build your own personal brand inside of that company too. Okay, and then an entrepreneur means that you take all the liability, you take all the risk, you take all the debt, you take all the money, you take all the expense, you take everything, you're, you're, the, you're the owner. And, you know, really at the end of the day, I know a lot of people that are entrepreneurs that make more than the owner because they're really good at what they do and they have a a, a 20% of the risk. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Andy. A lot of you leave comments telling me that you need help. Do me a favor. I'm going to tell you the best way to get a hold of me. Shoot me a text message right now, 918-210-0254, 918-210-0254. I'll help you with whatever you need. I got your back for life. Let's get back to the video. So I need you to know four out of five millionaires work for someone else. Um, I just would like you guys to know that um, if you guys want to really kill it, uh, you don't have to own your own business. Okay. You can blow someone else's business up. Okay. And they'll pay you handsomely and very well for doing it. And if you're any, if you are doing it for somebody, you're blowing their business up and they're not paying you then get the fuck out of there. Okay. <laughs> because they don't care. Okay. Listen, money made, money paid. Everybody write this down. Money made, money paid. Everybody, please. This is a, this is a rule I live by and I'm not getting off track here, but I just felt like I need to give you some information that you guys need to know about why you need to learn how to speak, talk, run a business, run your own teams, grow your own company, kill it on social media, build it on, build a personal brand. I hear people say all the time, Oh, Hey, we're down here at ABC Chevrolet. It's like, dude, listen to me. Why don't you say your name's Andy Elliott? Why don't you tell people who you are? Why don't you tell them that you're in the transportation space and you work at a specific company because you love this company, but let me tell you what value I bring to the marketplace. And if you come see me at this company, I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do for you. See, build your own personal brand. People want to be attached to a human being. It's very rare that people will believe and trust in an entire company, but they will trust in a human being. Okay. That's why you got to build your own personal brand. And by the way, listen to me, write this down. Don't be a fraud. Like what I'm doing and why I'm teaching you guys this is because I believe a certain way. People sometimes don't always like the way I believe. I don't care. I play with my heart. I take shit personal and I want to grow people and I love people. Okay. And if I'm not right for you, dude, there's 8 billion people. Go find someone who does. I'm not saying I'm right for you. But if you're around me, I'm going to push you. I'm going to grow you. I'm going to make you uncomfortable. I'm going to tell you the truth. I don't think I'm better than you. But dude, don't get around me and expect to say the same because I have to grow. So if you're around me, I'm going to make you grow. So a lot of people don't like that because a lot of people like to be comfortable. Okay. But I know this, you do you. Okay. So I'm going to give you guys, guys, remember, take some pins. So I, this morning, because I always have to kind of write, by the way, I don't, A lot of this stuff that I'm going to teach you today, I learned this in the beginning. And then I, today it's just built in me. I don't do this anymore. It's just, I'm a machine. You're going to be a machine. Remember the beginning, you learn a word track, right? You're like, oh, you're memorizing. It sounds kind of scripted. You feel stupid. And then after a while, you're like, dude, I don't need that piece of paper no more. I'm not going to look at that script. I own this shit. And then you got it down. That's what I want you guys to know is is what I'm going to teach you today, memorize it, practice it, do it until it becomes just second nature to you. Like it's embedded in your DNA. And then the things that you do need to continue to do because it just really helps you a lot, then do it. Okay. So everybody, I took two pages of notes this morning um, that I wrote down. So I'll expect when we're done for you to probably have two pages of notes. Okay. At least. All right. And I'm not going to read these to you, but I want you to tactically understand how to become a public speaker. Okay. Which this will play out in every area of life. So number one, I want you to write down the five basic public speaking tips. This is the basics. You must get these. And I may even repeat myself twice during certain times today, just because it's that important. Number one, write this down, make eye contact. If anybody ever knows this, if you've ever been in the presence of being around me, I fucking stare through your soul. Like my eyes, like look right through your soul. Why? 
because eye contact is one of the most important things that I have believed in as a human being. When someone is talking to me, I want them to look in my eyes. If somebody can't look in my eyes for very long, I can't trust them. So number one, I gauge whether I can trust, I, I gauge whether I can trust someone else and how serious they are about what they're telling me based on the eye contact that they'll give me. In return, I feel that I should do that same for other people, which is what I want. Um, guys, listen to me. I'm gonna tell you something just so you're aware. If you wanna fucking run an audience, you wanna get up on a stage and talk to one person or 10,000 people, I'm gonna tell you this. If you wanna really get someone to pay attention to you, make them more important than you. Make them more important than you. This isn't about fucking you. I don't give a shit how much you know. It needs to be about how much you care about them. When people see that you care about them, they will listen. When people see that you are in this for them, they will listen. How do they get that? Rule number one, basics, eye contact. You got to use eye contact. Most people in this world are awful at eye contact. Awful. Okay. So I need you to consciously from now on, anybody you're having a conversation with, I, you've heard me say this, the window, the eyes are the window to the soul. I can see in someone's soul by looking into their eyes. Okay. I know what's going on. I know if they're lying to me. Okay. Don't look away. Look in their eyes. Okay. All right. So eye contact. Number two, this is important. Know your audience. This is a big one. Okay. Any time that I'm speaking or I'm talking to someone, I always know my audience. I know who they are. I look, Hey, they fucking hate me. Cool. At least they hate me. Hey, they love me. These people know me. They don't know me. Sometimes people don't. Know. Okay. I'm gonna give you an example. If I walk out and people pay X amount of money to come see me. Number one, the room already knows me. So when I come out, I'm like, damn, I'm so fired up to see you guys, my people. I'm like, that's how it starts. If they don't know me, okay, and, and I was and I was uh, allowed to speak to these people because let's say I'm a speaker and they don't know me, then I might start out with a personal story and tell them why they need to know me, okay? Like, hey guys, my name's Andy Elliott. Number one, I'm honored to be here. It's a privilege to have this opportunity to speak to you guys. What I'm about to tell you today, if you guys can give me your mind, will change your life forever. And I'm probably like a lot of you guys. And see, and immediately I'm pulling them into me so that they want to know me. Okay, so listen, what did I just say? Know your audience. Do they know you? Do they believe in you? Hey, sometimes I got to talk to a group of people who don't believe in me. And I need to know, by the way, I speak in to them that they don't believe in me. So know your audience. Okay. So number one, eye contact. Number two, know your audience. Number three, stand up straight. I'm going to tell you this. I don't respect people who slouch. Okay. Don't, don't come in here and see there, there's a posture, a stance in which you stand that shows me that you are the person who are right for me to fix this problem or to get me where I want to go. There is a time where, can, can you guys walk into a room and tell when someone believes in themselves when they don't? Just by a simple posture stance. Yes, you can. Guys, your posture, stand up straight. Stand up straight like you own that room. You own that conversation. You own that. And by the way, listen to me. You ain't got to be arrogant. You ain't got to be a prick. You don't have to be a dick. You can tell people the truth. You can be super loving and sweet. You can cry with somebody, but stand up straight. All right, now listen, all this is going to play out because if you can become this person that I'm telling you guys, you guys can demand whatever you want and get it. All, all of this. Okay, number four, get words. Write this down exactly the way I take. Get words off of your power, your power slide, your PowerPoint slides. So I'm going to explain this to you. If you're ever going, now listen, if it's a small meeting, three or four people, you're obviously not going to have a PowerPoint. You're going to be like, hey, guys, look at my PowerPoint. But if you're in, a, in an event, okay, like I'll go to an event, there'll be a couple thousand people, and I'll go to talk. I have a PowerPoint. I don't read PowerPoints. I look for words. A word will trigger me to say, ah, that's what I'm going to do. So what I'll do is that I'll send over slides that say, like, killer mentality. Two words, killer mentality, right? So I'll be like, next slide. Boom. And it says killer mentality. And I'll be like, you need to have a killer mentality. This is, and then I know that word triggers me to empty the information that I know. And then it says like, let's say the next slide says, be where your feet are. Okay. It doesn't say the reason why you want to be where your feet are is because no, no, it's not a, it's not a PowerPoint you're reading. Nobody wants you to read. When you start reading power slides, people check out. Okay. 
Look up there and says, be where your feet are. Be where your feet are. Wherever you are, you be there. Most of you guys, the reason why you don't get what you want, because you're not really where you're at. You're at, you're at the dinner with your wife. You're on a date night. You're on your fucking phone. Am I right? That's the problem. That's why this world's lost. That triggered me to have that conversation with whatever it is I'm going to have. So I want you to know if you're, by the way, listen to me. Some of you are listening to me right now and you're like, hey, I don't talk to people for a living. Hey, dumb ass, you want to one day? How about one day you want to learn so much that you, because listen, I, before 2019, I didn't get up and talk in front of people either. I spoke to my teens. I spoke to 20 or 40, 50 people that, you know, that I did business with, but I didn't get up either. Okay. But it doesn't mean you won't. Some of you right now, you're like, dude, I just, I just need to know what I need to know. And then I know that things are going to, are going to work out. Dude, listen to me. If you're great, you need to be telling the world how to become great. You need to be showing them. You need to get in front of people. We need guys. I'm building leaders. Okay. So if you're on here with me, my, my goal is to get you in front of a couple thousand people. Yeah. You're going to, you're sure you're going to close deals. Yes. You're going to get people in front of you that you're going to close down. Yeah. But like, dude, let's think bigger too. Okay. Like let's go do some big daddy. Shit. Okay. So number four, get, get points, get, get words off your PowerPoints. If you're speaking in front of people and then maybe you have 20 or 30 people, you know, Hey, get five slides. Choose a couple words that trigger you to say, ah, and that just keeps you on track. Because listen to me, number one rule to public speaking, you ever confuse somebody, they check out. And I know a lot of people start out strong and finish weak. So the reason why you'd use a power slide is just to, in the beginning, especially kind of keep you going in the direction you want to go. Okay. Everybody write this down and I'm going to tell you what power slides are for. Are you ready? Okay, so write these three, write down these three little points. I'm going to tell you how to engage someone and, and do whatever you want them to do. There's this thing called hook, story, close. Okay, let me explain a hook. Let's say um, I'm going to do a, a, a advertising commercial. Okay, and Derek, you see it comes on and it says, it starts out like this. Hey, would you like to lose, you know, 15, would you like to be 7% body fat, literally gain 10 pounds of muscle and lose 10, 15 pounds of fat within three weeks? Do you want to do that? It's like, it's like, Hey, would you like to lose 30 pounds of fat, literally gain 10 pounds of muscle and be 7% body fat within another 30 days? Hi guys. See, that's the hook. I'm going to get people to say, Hey, what, what do you say? Right. Hey, hey, would you like to earn seven figures a year? Yes. Seven figures literally have no education and be able to take a five day course in seven in, in a five day course. I can get you to earn seven figures a year. Hey, guys, my name is Andy Elliott. See, now I'm going to tell the story. See, hook hook means I'm going to hook your ass. OK, I'm going to hook you. OK, like, like I say something that stops you in your tracks. So watch this. So a hook would be, I, I introduce myself to somebody. Remember, people don't care about how much you know until they know how much you care, which means they know you're about to give them the answers, but you got to get them interested in you. Hey guys, my name's Andy Elliott. Number one, all I believe is everybody's qualified. My mom left when I was two. I was literally, I ran on the streets. I never had a mentor. I, I, my dad said, get a job and stay out of jail. And I was a loser. At 18 years old, all that changed. I got a job in sales. And what I'm about to tell you, if you'll listen, the same thing that happened to me that built me a nine figure business within three years can do the same for you, but you're going to need to pay attention and everybody's qualified regardless of education or experience. I just need you to listen. Boom. Hook. So I'm, so I'm explaining how this works. Okay. Hook. And then the story, what's the story? If I'm interested in an in angel, okay, and Angela, and if Angela hooks me and she makes me feel that I need to listen to what she has to say, then she can tell me the story. Hey, my name is Angela, okay? What I'm about to tell you is a little timeline story of how this all started. Now, it's not going to be a long one, but it's going to be important because I, I guarantee I went through some of the same stuff that a lot of you have gone through, and I'm going to show you how to beat it and overcome it, and then I'm going to show you what's sitting on the other side of this. Okay. And then there's, so that's a story. Okay. And then there's the, or the story could be, have you ever had a problem with this? Have you ever thought that this wasn't possible for me? Hey, I thought the same thing. And then, you know what? I realized that I was lied to my whole life. Okay. That's your story. You're going to tell your story, a captivating story that makes people connect with you. 
close. What does a close mean? Well, close could mean, and by the way, write down call to action. A call to action is a close. Okay. Now, sometimes when you're doing a public speaking deal, it could be a call to action. Like you're going to have them spend money with you. Okay. Hey guys, number one, it was an honor speaking to you guys today. You're amazing. I'm, I'm grateful. Um, if some of you guys would like to go deeper and I have triggered something inside of you that said, you know what? I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired and you need a blueprint. I've got a blueprint. I would love to share it with you. I'd love to even help you get to where you want to be. Guys, scan this. Guys, text this. Guys, click the link below. Call to action. I'm telling them what to do next. Or my call to action would be just to say, hey, I love you guys. And now you need to change. Now that you've heard the information, now you need to make a decision. Your future is made shaped by the decisions you make today. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Andy. A lot of you leave comments telling me that you need help. Do me a favor. I'm going to tell you the best way to get a hold of me. Shoot me a text message right now, 918-210-0254, 918-210-0254. I'll help you with whatever you need. I got your back for life. Let's get back to the video. If the, day, the life you have today was shaped by the decisions you made yesterday and the future you're going to have tomorrow will be shaped by the decisions you make today. So I would only ask that all of you right now get a pen piece of paper and write down the decision you're going to change today. Or I can close them and get them to buy something from me. Guys, notice I'm speaking very broadly today. I'm not, I'm not trying to close anybody on like a car deal or like a solar panel, or I'm not trying to close you on a real estate transaction. I'm trying to teach you guys how communication and life works when you're speaking to one person or thousands at one time, how to make sure. So hook story, close, hook them. Hook them right when you come out. Think, hey, man, what could I say in 15 seconds to get everybody to listen to me for the next 15 minutes? Okay. And then what am I going to say for the next 15 minutes? And then what is my call to action at the end? What would I like everybody to do? Why did I tell everybody all this shit? Why? Why did I give them all this value? Because I wanted them to do something, to make a decision. Guys, you're never going to ha have a public speaking deal just to give information or talk. you're going to want somebody to do something with you. OK, and that's the call to action. Know what you want. Don't mumble. Be very clear. OK, so anyways, five basic deals. Eye contact. Know your audience. Stand up straight. Get the words off your PowerPoint slides if you have them. Number five, show up with energy. OK, all right, let's move on to the next one. That right there, that's called the foundation of the house. All right, I'm going to give you 10 rules. These are some rules that you've got to live by, okay? And by the way, I bet you realize that some of these you're already doing and some of them you're not doing at all. So let's go through them. 10 rules. Number, rule number one, which is going to make you the best, nothing, it beats practice. So rule number one is going to be practice, practice, practice. Just write it down three times in a row because there's nothing that's going to override you having a fake meeting in a room by yourself with no one around or having a conversation. Anytime I go to close something and I know that it's like a big transaction, like I generally will have a conversation about that conversation before I go in so I can play it in my head. Okay. Like I need to be familiar with how I believe this is going to go. And by the way, it's called being a visionary. I need to believe how I think that this is going to go. So that helps me really when I do deliver it, push it the way I want. And especially in the beginning when you're new. Okay. So some rules, if you want to be great when you're having a, um, <laughs> well, I used to run sales meetings. I, I look, Hey, how many of you guys got a manager right now or a leader that fucking sucks sales meetings? You're like, dude, this guy, he negs everybody out. <laughs> like we go into a sales meeting and we're fucking, we we're happy. We leave back like that guy. I hate him. Like they they exist and they, they don't care. They, they talk to hear themselves talk. You guys, you're going to bring value to the world. You're going to change people's lives. Just practice um, what you're going to say before you say it. And I promise you, man, you're going to deliver it so well. Okay, so that's rule number one. Number two, speak. Write this down. Rule number two, speak, don't read. Never, ever, ever read in front of people. Let me give you an example. I'm just going to tell you this. If I was talking to you guys right now and I said, guys, um, I want to read something to you. Immediately, the second I open the book, and I start to read it to you, if it isn't flowing like, like water and I'm an extremely good speaker and I'm really good, right? It's gonna throw off the whole thing. Literally people will disconnect like that. I could read the Bible to you, okay? But I need to know it if I'm gonna say, why not just memorize it beforehand? And they say, well, it's a couple paragraphs. Who gives a shit? Memorize it. 
Okay. It's impressive when you say, guys, there's a book right here. Okay. In the Bible, it says first Peter five, seven it says, cast all your anxieties on God. Cause he cares for you. It says the devil's like a roaring lion trying to devour you. He's trying to take you down. It says, but resist him and stand firm, stand firm in your faith because other people around the world are undergoing the same kind of suffering as you. These people are suffering, but it says God almighty hand will lift you up in due time, make you firm, steadfast. He's got you. Okay. Resist him. Stay strong. You don't have to read it. First Peter five, seven says, so, dude, you just turned everybody off. Never have a disconnect. So speak, don't read. Okay. I just want to tell you that because I see a lot of people and they're speaking um, and they're, and they're reading shit and do the second you start reading, everybody checks out. Okay. So that's a gold rule. Don't, don't read shit to people. Okay. One sentence, I get it, but just memorize it then. Rule uh, number three. Okay. Everybody write this down. Be yourself. Okay. Don't be me. Right. Don't be anybody else. You be you. Guys, I want to tell you, my personal brand is me. Everybody, listen, I, I'm, I'm going to explain something to you, okay? Um, this is crazy, man. The more, and, and by the way, listen, guys, a lot of this I learned just because nobody fucking taught it to me. And I did it wrong, and then I did it right. And you know what everybody told me? Find somebody you want to be like and be just like them. Well, I did that, okay? But then I wasn't me. And I'm like, but I, I do, I did want to be like them, but I also wanted to be me like them, right? Like I like what they do. I believe in them, but I wanted to also be me. And I know there's things in me that I need to change and I'm doing that, but I need to be me. A personal brand is this. So there's two types of influencers. You got influencers that literally watch social media all day long. And then they look for things that other people say, and then they just go and repeat it like a parrot on their social media page. And then they say, well, that guy got a lot of views because he said that. Well, now I'm going to go say that. They don't even believe that they're not doing it. They don't think that they're a fraud. What I want you to do is you be you. Okay. Which means it's called a personal brand, which means you're just recording you because you are you and people will love you for you or they'll hate you, but whatever it is, you know, your raging fans out there. There was something I learned in business a long time ago. I'm gonna tell you guys something really important. Okay. I, I believe in people like psycho crazy. I believe that people are the most resilient fucking people in the world. I've never seen anything like it. I, I've watched broken people build the most beautiful things. I've watched people who, you know, who almost killed themselves, who are horrible people who did the worst things or who didn't believe just do the biggest. Shit. And I, I like, like, I never think somebody's messed up too much. I never think somebody's gone too far. I never, I, I'm just like, dude, you listen, Hey dude, by the way, look, I had to run a bad team to run a good one. I had to be, I had to, I had to make bad decisions to make good ones. Okay. Guys like, Oh, I learned, I heard what you did 10 years ago. Yeah. I said, yeah, dude, had I not done that 10 years ago, I wouldn't have a life I have today. I promise you, I wouldn't know what a bad life looks like. I have fucked up so bad that I can know how to live a good life now. Like, it's cool. Like you guys got to understand, like that's, that's, that's the power in what I'm trying to teach you guys today is why you guys want to become greater is to show people that you're the example and how amazing you guys can become. And then also teach other people um, how to go get it. But, but you got to be yourself. Okay. You got to learn from everybody else. The world's your library. Learn from them all. I want you guys to learn from me, but also I want you guys to become dangerously you. Okay. And, uh, and, and just believe your own way. I'm telling you guys, like you guys are going to do such a, such a big shit with the stuff you're learning today. I promise you. Okay. But just so be you. Okay. And that way you don't have to try to, you don't get lost in the middle of speaking to somebody. Um, by the way, everybody write down the word heart. Okay. Um, when I say be yourself, let me explain why this is probably really important because whenever you speak with your mouth, people will listen for a minute and then they'll check out. But when you speak with your heart, people don't check out. Okay. Cause it's very rare. People don't speak with their heart anymore and people don't put their heart in anything anymore. So if you're yourself and you're not pretending to be someone else, you can play with your heart and that's what will separate you. And when people normally wouldn't do certain things, they will do abnormal things for you because they see that you care from another level that they haven't seen. 
You don't have to be perfect, but if you can play with your heart, I promise you, man, you'll look up. And I was going to tell you guys uh, what I was just telling you about a thousand raging fans is when I started my company, I said, there's 8 billion people in this world, 8 billion. Tell me I can't find a thousand people, just a thousand that, that would believe the same way as me. And I could just take care of those people. And, and, and I did, and I started with five and then it went to 10 and then there were 15 people. There was, and then there was a hundred and one day there was a thousand. And I was like, well, why not? Why can't we do 3000? And like, that's, that's how it all started. So I just need you guys to know if you want raging fans, which are people that can know that you're the real truth, which is how they want to live in life. That's how I live. I need you guys to know you got to be yourself. Okay. By the way, you got to kill all the limiting beliefs. You, you got you to keep growing, but you, but you got to stay you. That's what makes you dangerous, okay? Um, okay, so aim for a positive state of mind and a confident attitude. You got to write this down. So your goal is to have a positive state of mind and a confident attitude at all times. Anytime your attitude isn't confident. I didn't say good attitude. I said a confident attitude. Dude, confidence is so important. A lot of times people don't believe in themselves enough or they don't believe something can happen, you're going to need to let them borrow some confidence, okay? You need to let them borrow. Now, everybody understand this. There's a fine line between arrogance and cockiness and confidence. Confidence with the heart is what separates the arrogance and the cockiness, okay? Arrogance and cockiness, which means I know my business better than everybody else. It's my way or the highway. People hate that. But now I want you to know this, but if it's my way or the highway, but I'm telling you that with my heart, because I know this to be true and I want the same for you is when you pull the heart into it with the confidence, that's why I said, like, you got to make sure that you have a confident attitude the whole time you're talking. And I said a positive state of mind. Okay. Everything that you got to do can be never bring anything negative into a conversation. You can criticize someone and critique them positively. Listen, Angela, I, I believe in you. I think you're amazing, but I'm just going to tell you, don't look at me in the eyes. Since you don't look in the eyes, I don't believe you. You don't look at me in the eyes. I don't believe you. Okay. But I'm going to tell you, I, I believe in you, but when you don't look at me in the eyes, I don't. Okay. So I, I want you to start doing it. Now you're like, damn, okay. This guy's telling me the truth because he wants me to have people believe in me. Okay. Like, like there's a way to tell people things. I always have a good positive, always spin it off into a positive. If you're going to tear somebody down and I don't mean you're tearing them down, but if you're training them, if you're critiquing them, you got to make sure you, you bring them back up. Never, ever, ever make a negative statement without telling them the reason why that you said that and the power and the positiveness of what could happen from telling them that. So positive state of mind, confident attitude. All right. Now listen, everybody write this down. Use examples of illustration and humor. Humor is great. Humor is great. Humor is one of the best closing tools in the world, but humor also, the more funnier you can get, because I'm a serious guy. And if you'll train with me, I get serious, but also crack some jokes and have some fun. Because if you don't, um, it, it just doesn't break the edge whenever you're really taking somebody somewhere. So use humor and then also use illustrations. Explain how these things work in real life with other people. So third party, use a lot of third party stuff. Okay. So I'd be like, Hey, Christina. So I'm talking to her. I'm like, Hey, Christina, the reason why I know this will work for you is because there's an, there's another woman, her name's, you know, Erica. She's amazing. She looks just like you. Her hair looks just like you. She could be your twin sister. Okay. Let me tell you what problem she had. And I'm going to tell you what her outcome was and how she did it. And, and basically what I'm doing now, instead of telling you what to do, I'm telling you about what Erica did and she was just like you. And now you're like, man, I want to be like Erica. So now you're listening to that story. And it's instead of me direct telling you or direct selling you or direct speaking to you, I'm speaking to you in third party. I'm using illustrations, paint pictures, tell stories. Telling stories is how you're going to get rich. Okay. People need to know the facts. Yes, they do. But they need to know it in a story form. Find a way to make what you're saying attractive entertaining. Okay. All right. So everybody write this down, ask questions and invite participation. So let's say Arnie's in front of me. I'd be like, 
Uh, I'm just going to be like, ask questions like, hey, Arnie, I'm sure you've probably at some point in time looked in the mirror and didn't like who you saw. Would you agree? Have you ever done that, Arnie? And then Arnie's like, yeah, I've done that too. And I don't like that. And you're like, yeah, man, we don't like that. You know what? At the end of the day, Arnie, that's just us being hard on us. That's just us being bad to us. You know, Arnie, what I've learned, I've learned that the way that we speak to ourselves, the way that we talk to ourselves is ultimately how we think about ourselves. And we want other people to be good to us, right, Arnie? We want other people to be good to us. But honestly, at the end of the day, a lot of times we're not very good to us, are we? We aren't. We're the bad people. And we actually look at other people and think they're doing it, and really we're the ones doing it. See, I'm, I'm using him for participation with this. And when I say his name or talk to him, it pulls him into my, my conversation. Okay. And by the way, once you, I'm going to give you guys a secret. Once you start talking to other people, uh, I'm, I'm going to tell you how I'll gravitate uh, and get a lot of people's attention, whether they want to give me their attention or not. Um, if I'm in a room full of salespeople and I got a hundred sales guys, I'm going to say, Hey guys, at any point today over the next hour that I'm speaking to you, I will be grabbing people randomly at any point in time. I could grab you and hit you with an objection and I'm going to not want you to embarrass yourself. So I'm going to need you to pay attention today. And I'm going to tell you, I've been most, the people say that I most commonly call on the people not paying attention. So as I look around the room today, I'm going to explain to you how I know if you're paying attention to me. You will be looking at me in the eyes. You won't be on your phone and you'll be sitting upright and straight and you'll be in a learning posture. If I don't see that, there's a good chance I will call on you. Does everybody understand? And then I say, they say, yeah. So the whole time they're, I'm watching them, if I ever see somebody not paying attention, I'll be like, hey, Dan, um, why don't you go ahead and stand up for a minute? And then Dan's like, son of a bitch. And then I use Dan and then everybody else in the room is like, Oh, shit. like I better pay attention. Participation. Okay. Sometimes it's in a good way. Sometimes it's in a forced way, but understand this, that this is how you get people to listen to your, to you in a meeting. Okay. If, if, if you're a speaker, if you're speaking and you're, or you're holding a meeting and you're ever seeing that people are on their phones, first of all, I don't tolerate that. I'm not being disrespectful. Now, if I'm a jack. And I'm a meeting. If I'm a manager having an hour meeting over bullshit that doesn't even mean anything, I get it. I'm like, shit, I'm ready to leave this meeting. We're not getting anywhere. Okay. But if I have a meeting, I'm having a meeting because I'm wanting you to know something so we can scale and grow or change and get better. Okay. So if I see that, I'm going to say, are you on your phone? And they're like, oh, uh, I'm like, no, no. Are you on your phone? Because I'm actually talking to you right now. Would it be disrespectful if you took me out to dinner and I was on my phone while you were taking me to dinner? Yes. Well, I had this meeting to have you in it with me because I have some important stuff and I care about you. Can, can we put your phone down? Like, like I, if you were talking, I wouldn't be on my phone. See, sometimes you have to do this. Okay. And, and you may say, well, God, that's being a dick. No, it's not. It's being real. Okay. Now, listen, I'm teaching you guys how to hold people's attention, but I'm also teaching you how, if you're talking, listen, if I'm talking to my wife and we're having a conversation about something and my wife is talking to me and I'm on my phone going, uh-huh, uh-huh. Is that respectful? No, she'll slap the hell out of me. Okay. I've learned, I put my phone down. I'm having a conversation and guess what? I can do whatever I need to do on that phone in a minute when we're done, but I would be a fool to pick up my phone and get smacked. Right. Uh, and by the way, listen to me, I'm going to explain something to you. Okay. I hear a lot of people that say, nobody respects me. It's because you let them disrespect you. Okay. Listen to me. You get what you tolerate. Don't tolerate people disrespecting you and they won't. By the way, everybody write this down. This is important. I didn't even have this wrote down. Be direct. If you want people to respect you, then guess what? Be direct. You know what that means? If somebody's on their phone and you don't like it, tell them you don't like it. Don't, this is so stupid. I see people all the time now, they're like, well, I don't, I don't like that, but I just didn't want to tell them, hey, you're an idiot. I'm sorry that you can't freaking open your mouth. By the way, in sales, we've learned that closed mouths don't get fed. Okay. Open your freaking mouth. Okay. Guys, be direct. If you don't like something, tell, hey, Christina, your boyfriend does something you don't like, you tell him, I don't like this. I don't like it. Hey, there's shit that I do that you probably don't like either. I expect you to tell me, okay? I don't want to do stuff that you don't like. But if I'm doing it, I don't know that it bothers you if you, unless you tell me. So I'm telling you that I love you, but I don't like it when you do that. So could you not do it? 
Yes, thank you. It means a lot to me. See, now you got a pretty damn good life now because everybody understands how to operate when they're around you or, and, and they can be direct back to you too. That's cool. I would prefer you guys to be direct with me and I would prefer to be direct to you. I don't want us to be fake and just be like everybody else. So be direct, be direct with people. You know, I, like I said, I was with this, these two people and I always tell the story and they said they were going to marriage counseling. I said, dude, I can save you your money. I said, if you treated each other like it was the beginning, there'll never be an end. I said, looked at the guy. I said, you still treat her like you did day one, first time you met her? Do you? Yes or no? He goes, no. I said, well, you wonder what the fucking problem is. That's direct. Okay. And by the way, it cuts all the fat, doesn't it, guys? Be aware. Everybody write this down. Be aware. Underline aware. Be aware of your audience's eye contact and body language. This is huge. So I need you to be aware. This is you as you're talking to one person or five people or 50,000. Okay. Be aware of their eye contact and their body language. I need you to shift and move and increase your voice higher or lower or in different ways. Okay. By watching the way that they operate. So now this isn't about you now. Now you're watching them. And if you see that they're getting cold signs, they're not looking at you, guess what? You may say, hey, listen to me. And they're like, oh, shit. you had to get them again. Okay. Look at their eye contact. Look at their body language. If anybody will ever, I'm giving you guys, you know, I know you guys know this, but have you ever heard me say, listen to me? It's called a pattern interrupt. I say it all the time. So about every two minutes during an event, you'll see, you'll hear me say something like this. Hey, listen to me. And I'll say something like that. Why? Because I'm catching people and I'm bringing them back in every two minutes. I got to reel people's asses back in because this damn mind just wanders all over the place. Okay. So it's called a pattern interrupt. And how often do you need to do them? Okay. As often as possible to make sure that you watch people's eye contact and body language. Okay. So everybody do me a favor, remember, and paint pictures and tell stories. Make sure you write that down one more time. Okay. A vast majority of your wealth will come from the ability to paint pictures and tell stories. Okay. Now everybody write this down. Always connect with your audience in a personal story. Can you guys tell a personal story that will tie you and them together? It's important. You need to learn how to do it. Okay. It's very, very important. By the way, how could you find a personal story? I'm going to give you an example. So let's say I'm sitting here talking to you guys and I'm going to give you an example. I'm going to say, all right, guys, I'm going to ask you a question. Who's an underdog? Raise your hand. Who's an underdog? All right. Raise your hand if you're an underdog. Okay. And notice, and notice I, I, I keep asking you guys to you all raise your hand. Okay. Now that I get everybody to raise their hand, then I'm going to say, all right, I want to tell you how you can go from being an underdog. Okay. To literally becoming this like that, how I did it. And then I'm going to tell you how underdogs are dangerous. And I'm going to talk to you about how people that come from nothing can end up with the most. And then I'm literally going to go down and I'm going to paint a picture and I'm going to tell a story that's personal between me and you both being underdogs. And that's what's going to tie us together. Okay. All right. So number one, connect with your audience in a personal story. Okay. Everybody write this down. Number one rule, number one rule over everything that I've told you so far. Okay. Make the audience the center of your universe. Make the audience the center of your universe, one person or 10,000. Guys, people need to know that they are more important than you. Every good speaker cares more about the audience than they do themselves. Make the audience the center of your universe. Okay, super important. This isn't about you. I don't, guys, this is about them. Understand the mistake that people do. Guy walks on stage tells everybody how much he fucking knows, how cool he is, how he went from the trash can sleeping in his car and now he's got a great life. What the fuck does that do for me? How, how can I see myself getting to where you are? How would that work for me? Okay, you're going to say, guys, I'm, I've done some amazing things and this isn't about me today, but it's about every one of you getting everything you've ever wanted in your life and more. I don't want you to be me. I want you to be you, but I'm going to show you today how to get it. And all I need you to do is listen. And I promise you, there's some ideas today that I'm going to give you that some of them are going to be $10,000 ideas, $100,000 ideas, 
million dollar ideas. If you'll listen carefully to me, I'm going to give you guys a hundred million dollar idea. Who wants a hundred million dollar idea? See, people are like, I fucking want one of those. See, it's like, it's like, hey, now you're trying to listen. You're like, where's those ideas? And I'm like, listen to me. You need, see, notice I said again, listen to me. See that shit? Always do it. I'm giving you guys my hacks. So I tell them, when you hear something, okay, listen closely. You don't want to write it down because I'm going to be dropping so many gold nuggets and bombs on you today that you're not going to be able to keep up and you may accidentally forget one. Now I got people taking notes and shit. Okay, what did I do? I just got the audience ready to learn. All the other speakers, they didn't do that. They got on stage, they rambled their mouth, they told them a story. Uh, oh, that guy's successful. What does that do for me? Okay, so number one rule, make the audience the center of your universe. They matter more than you do and tell them they do. Nobody, everybody loves when you say, hey, I don't want you to be me. Okay, I don't, I'm not here for you to do that. Okay, I'm here for you to go get everything in your life you've ever wanted and more. So I need you to listen up and listen well. All right, this is important. I'm going to give you some fast things to write down, okay? We're going to move quick. Ready? Just write this down. Put important. Do not mumble. Do not mumble. Don't mumble your words, okay? You must practice, practice, practice because you cannot mumble. Guys, understand when you're speaking in front of people, sometimes your face will get hot. Sometimes, you know, you'll get nervous. Guys, don't fall into that mumbling stage. I'm telling you. Okay, this is where people get ruined. So I'm going to go through some quick stuff. Don't mumble, number one. Number two, speak clearly. Speak very, very clear. Talk to people as if you were talking to two-year-olds. Make it where everyone can understand. Okay? Confused mind does nothing. Don't confuse people. Okay, slow, write this down. Slow it down if necessary. Okay? Some people, they start talking really fast and people can't understand the points or they're not going with them. Slow it down. If you were following me to Dallas and, you were, and I was going too fast, if I keep going fast, I'm probably going to lose you and you're not going to end up there with me. Okay. Slow it down. Okay. If necessary. All right. Listen to me. Lower your voice when needed to pull them in. Lower it in. Okay. Okay. Now listen, this is huge. Lower your voice if necessary to pull them in. There's times that I will slow down like this and people are like, why are you slowing down? Because I've got some, I need you to really understand what I'm about to say and I'll slow down and then write this down. Okay. Project your voice. Okay. And use energy when you speak. So if I, I'm going to give you an example. If I use my voice and I project energy, and I'm fired up. If anybody's ever trained with me on stage and you know how we get, I fucking yell. I'm screaming. I'm yelling. I'm fired up. I'm all jacked up. You can't just sit there and listen to someone that's running like me going crazy. But then, but then I'll slow down like this. And then everybody stops and it just keeps paradigm shifting people back and forth. Okay. Guys, I'm telling you how to go get everything you want. This is how to do it. Listen to me. Mastery is all I care about. Mastery. Kobe Bryant, master basketball. You're going to master speaking. Project your voice, get excited, have energy, and then also slow it down when necessary to pull them in. Okay. Everybody write this down. Stay relaxed. Stay relaxed. Don't ever look nervous and, and own your mind. Own your mind. I need you to understand you are going to have people while you're talking, look at you like I fucking not listening to this guy. You're going to have people roll their eyes. You're going to have people be disrespectful. You're going to have people do all kinds of shit. It ain't going to throw you off. Not a chance in hell. Okay. Never get triggered. Never, never listen. Don't ever let anybody else take up space in your head. Never. Know exactly what you're there for. Know exactly what you're there to do. Okay. Okay. Also write down, know how to communicate. Just remember being a master communicator is what you are. You know, you're speaking, you're talking, you're communicating. Okay. So master communicator. All right. Okay. Make sure that you connect with the audience. Okay. Make sure you connect with them. Remember this. They're not people 
that are foreign to you. They're your family, they're your friends, they're people that you're inviting in. And that's why you'll hear me say something like this. I'm gonna give you an example. So I'll say, hey guys, listen, number one, I am you and you are me. We are all the same. Every one of us today wants to go do X, Y, and Z. And I, I pull us together by saying things like that. Okay, why other people are disconnected, come in cold and start speaking. I let them know that, that they are more qualified than I was. And I am them and they are me. And I want set in their chair and I want set where you're at. And I remember what I wanted. And I'm going to tell you, somebody had a conversation with me about how I'm about to have a conversation with you. And that was the day my life changed. And today, if you'll listen today, your life's going to change also. See, connect with your audience. Okay. I am you, you are me. <clears throat> it's a great one. It, it is the truth. Okay. All the stuff I'm telling you guys is the truth. These aren't lines. These are for you to understand. Okay. Most people don't know how to do this. That's why most people don't get shit in this life. Okay. And you guys are going to get it. Okay. Write this down. Avoid confusing the audience. Okay. A lot of people confuse people and a confused mind does nothing. Okay. Know what you want to say before you say it. Know what your goal of this meeting is or what the outcome needs to be. Okay. Stay on track. Okay. Everybody write this down. How to calm your nerves before speaking. Now, by the way, this is going to make you guys great for selling. Okay. Like, like this, this just, I could, this could be called how to become a great salesman, but I really wanted to call this how to become a public speaker, because I would like for you guys, when you do become great to make sure that you please share your message with more people. And by the way, start now, start today. Okay. So, um, how to calm your nerves before speaking. Um, I thought this would be a big one because this is something I struggled with in the beginning. Are right, you ready? Practice, number one, practice, because naturally when you rehearse, um, you become more confident. Okay, especially when you're when you're ready to deliver, you've been like, oh man, hey, I've been here before, you know, I know what this feels like. And I think that's the reason why you rehearse. You can say, hey, I know what this feels like. You know, and, and you're always gonna do it better when you do do it, but just understand the value in doing it beforehand. Um, your, your mind says, hey, we've been here before. We know what to expect. Okay. And that's important. You guys, I got some really good tips here. Okay. So that's going to be number one. Okay. Number two. Okay. And by the way, practice your speech multiple times. Okay. Like you don't just do it once. Like do it as many times as you can, uh, especially, you know, if like, if I'm going to do a sales meeting, like if you want to really fire a sales team up, like learn, learn how to do it. You know, practice is, is huge. People underestimate practice, underestimating things, is to re listen, most people don't get what they want in life because they underestimate everything, the amount of effort that it's going to take to be good at anything. Like somehow people are like, dude, I'm just going to go to this fucking training and I'm just going to be great now. No, you're not. You're not. You're going to have to go to thousands of more trainings and you're going to have to practice when the stands are empty and nobody's around. And if you don't want to do it, you're just not going to be fucking great, dude. It's just, just un accept it. There's no easy road. Look, it's, it's a right? To, to be broke, it's a bitch to get rich. Okay. It's hard being a winner. It's also hard being a loser, dude. There's no easy. Okay. <laughs> Everything that guys, everybody write down one word, suffer. You're going to suffer your whole life for either becoming better or for becoming less than you thought you're going to be. You're always going to suffer. So how about we all just do this? Let's just fall in love with suffering. Like instead, instead of me like lying to you, like the rest of the world and saying like, Hey guys, I don't want you to suffer. No, you know what? I, I do want you guys to suffer a lot. I really do. And I want to suffer a lot too, because it feels good because when we suffer, we grow. How about that? Okay. Just remember that. Shit. Okay. So yeah, you know, and by the way, a lot of people know the t back of the t-shirts, like embrace the suck. We know the t-shirt sayings, but we don't, we don't really mean it. I want you guys to be addicted to really meaning it. Okay. All right. So listen, everybody write this transform nervous energy into enthusiasm. This is a big one. Okay. So take any nervous energy and say, man, I, I don't have anxiety. I'm excited. Like flip your shit, own your mind. Okay. So basically when you're nervous or you have anxiety, say, dude, I'm not nervous. I'm not, I don't have anxiety. I'm freaking excited. Let's go, baby. My heart's racing because I want to freaking do this. Not because I'm afraid to do it. Flip your mind. Okay. This will help calm your nerves because you're, you're, you're going to tell yourself who you are and what you're doing. Okay. 
this is a big one. Attend other speeches. One of the ways that I've learned a lot is by watching other people talk. I'm a, I'm a freak on watching other people talk because it really teaches me a lot about how I want to operate. Okay. So attend other speeches. You know, I watch a lot of TED talks. I watch a lot of stuff just to watch how people tell stories, how they articulate their words. Okay. I think those things uh, really help me learn a lot just by shutting up and watching other people operate. Okay. World be cool, man. It's got some bad is in it and also it's got some people that ain't some bad ass too so it really helps me to attend other speeches and watch stuff okay this is a big one if you're ever going to speak in front of a lot of people arrive early okay i want i want to explain w- why next to that i want you to write underneath it adjust to your surroundings um this is a big one to me if i'm going to speak and there's a lot of people and i mean like a couple thousand or whatever or, you know ten thousand i went to an event in miami um, I spoke in front of about 30,000 people. Um, it was in this big, uh, it was in the Marlin Stadium. And um, I remember I got there and there's this weird echo, you know, and I'm looking at where everybody's at. I'm looking how it is. I'm looking at the backdrop on the stage. And if you've ever been in these events, it echoes so loud. You almost can't hear yourself. They, they make you put mics in your, in your, in your headset so you can, can't hear yourself echoing back when you're on stage. It's very different than being in a room with two or 300 people. And I want to tell you something. I got there early. I walked around where the audience was. Okay. And then when I came back up to the stage, I felt comfortable in the room. And then I owned that bitch and I went crazy, but I didn't just show up and expect to walk out. And then I didn't know my, my surroundings. So everybody arrive early. Okay. If you're ever going to do this, okay. Adjust to your surroundings. Okay, make it your home. I don't care where you go. There's no home court, no work court. Okay, just know the place you're at. And you can dominate anywhere, any place you're at. Write this down underneath it, meet and greet. I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you a way that has really helped me get warmed up, okay? Um, I shake everybody's hand, okay? If you've ever been around me, you'll notice I'll hug you, I'll high five you, I'll shake your hand, I'll show you some love. Before I ever speak, I talk. I don't like to like hide back and then come out. I like to go out and say, hey guys, what's going on? What's up, what's up, what's up, what's up? Why? Because I I, I get the room in a setting where like, like I'm no, like we're all, like, like we're a brotherhood. Okay, we're family, because we are. Okay, I'm not better than anybody. Um, I, I go out and say hi to people. To me, that really helps me chill out. Go, go shake some hands, go meet some people. Uh, it'll show you that, you know what? These are your people, okay? By the way, listen to me. Some of you guys had, haven't ever done this yet. Let me tell you, I'm explaining this to you so you will do it, okay? Which is my prayer for all of us is, you know, we got 42 people on this call. Dude, if I could build 42 killers, shit, we'll change the world, man. 42 people can change the world. That's for sure. Jesus did it with 12. We can do it with 42, Okay, so um, use positive visualization. Everybody write this down. Use positive visualization. Okay, so I need you to understand this. You control your mind. I need you to envision. When I sold, I would always, and I do still sell, I would envision the negotiation in advance. I envision what this is going to look like, how this is going to go down. Did you think I envisioned it going bad or good? Good. So it went good. Same thing with your speech. You're going to knock this shit out of the park 10 people one person do when i talk to my wife tonight damn she's gonna freaking be fired up when i'm done okay when i talk to this guy when i go interview that guy he's gonna quit his job and come work for me today why because that's how this rolls i'm gonna visualize this shit. i know what's gonna happen okay own the shit in your mind before it happens and it will happen that's it Okay, it sells 101, closing 101, but this works for public speaking. So take deep breaths. This is a big one, okay? Like for real, like Tony Robbins has always been my mentor since I was little. I love him. He's amazing. My, my goal, if you're asked to ask Andy, what is your goal in life? My, I want to be the next Tony Robbins. That's what, that's what I want to do. Now, I think I can do it. I think it's going to be hell. I think it's going to take me 15 more years, okay? But I'm ready. And I'm going to tell you that I watched Tony before he goes on stage. He's always like, (sighs) 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 he's getting oxygen to his brain. It gets him fired up and it literally puts him in a state 
to really have his brain functioning very well. Plus, he doesn't get out there and lose his breath when he's talking. So just telling you, there's reading things that you can do, but just take some deep breaths, man. Promise you, dude. Okay. By the way, listen to me. Some of you guys may say, I want to do that. It's totally cool, man. Hey, I'm just talking about how big you want to go in life. Okay. The bigger you want to go, more you're going to want to fucking know, better you're going to want to become. Okay. It's good, great, and unstoppable. You want to be unstoppable? This is, this is how to do it. Okay. All right. So this is a big one. Exercise before speaking. Let me explain why. This is why I have to work out every morning, no matter what. So when you work out, it, 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 uh, it boosts your endorphins in your body. And it makes you just, makes you just on fire, man. So I would tell you, if you're ever going to speak, I don't care what time it is, dude, exercise every day of your life, but always do it before, before work, before the event, before don't, don't do it at night. Do it before so you can get the effects of the exercise into what you're doing. It, the effects are massive. Oh, my God. Okay. Use a power stance. Write this down. Use a power stance. Okay. What is a power stance? It means, dude, when you're talking to them, you are the authority. It's a stance of authority. Okay. When they look at you, they need to be like, okay, all right. All right. They're the boss or they know what they're doing or they understand this. Okay. A stance of authority. Okay. So it's called a power stance. All right. Listen, Hey, drink a lot of water. If you're going to do an event, make sure you drink a lot of water. Um, the day before and the day before, I mean, a shit ton. because the more water you drink, okay. You don't want your freaking voice getting blown out. Okay. Last thing you want to do is be talking to people and freaking blow your voice out. And then you're halfway through the deal. And you're like, Hey, 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 <laughs> everybody's like, God blew his freaking voice out. Shit. Amateur. I've been there before, man. I didn't drink enough water. Okay. So you guys got to stay fueled up. All right. Here's another one. Smile a lot. Guys, smiling is one of the most beautiful things in the world. Do it a lot. Do it all the time. Now, listen, lastly, anytime you're doing a meeting, okay, record yourself. I need you to understand this. I watch recordings of all of my speeches. My wife cracks up. She's like, dude, every time I walk in, you're watching yourself. Ah, that's weird, Andy. She's like, you're in here watching yourself all smiling and shit. I'm like, no, babe. I'm watching because I'm erasing that that was me. And I'm trying to see what I have wanted to stay in that room with me. I'm watching me third party. It's important. Okay. Why do NFL players, why do professional athletes watch games um, from other people playing and go and watch their own games. I remember Beyonce one time, she said every time she finishes a performance on stage, she gets off stage, immediately goes into the back room, and she starts watching her whole performance. Why? Because uh, it's pretty fucking important to her. That's why. Okay. For those of you, when I talk to you, um, I'm talking to you guys like you're, you're the one percenters in the world. Uh, a lot of people don't you know, don't believe that people can do this. I'm telling you guys, if you'll listen to me and the stuff I went over today, I don't talk about a lot, but this will change your life like forever. Okay. Um, I need you to do me a favor, write this down and we're going to move on. Okay. Move people to their feet. Okay. Well, on this call, move people to their feet. Be so good at what you do. You make people want to stand up and say, shit, right? I don't want to sit down no more. Matter of fact, a lot of the times I'm going to tell you a trick. I'll tell everybody to stand up when I walk out because I want to tell them something for just a minute and I'm grateful that they're here. So I to tell them I love them and I appreciate them. And I never tell them to sit down. I just keep talking. And I'll look up and after an hour, everybody's still standing. That's a pretty powerful trick. Um, I'm just giving you guys some things to know. You may not use it this day. Maybe you'll use it six months from now. But I need you to know what you're capable of and what you can do if you're coachable and you've listened to what I said today. And then one more thing, write this down, speak powerfully, speak powerfully at all times. And I want you to write underneath that. This is important. It's not just about what you say. It's also how you say it. This is how I have buried a lot of my competition. A lot of people are saying the same shit in the world. They're regurgitating the same stuff. I say it differently. 
I say it the same way, but how I say it is differently. I need you guys to understand this. There are no rules. Conor McGregor, he became who he was when he found a coach who would let him fight the way that he wanted to fight. He wanted to hit differently, punch differently, kick differently, and do things differently. And he found the coach who supported it. I support you guys doing whatever you want. I would tell you guys, whatever it is you do, do it with lots of love, do it with your heart, and be real. Don't be a fucking fraud. Everybody's a fraud in this world. And I'm seeing it everywhere. Most people that you guys look up to and you look up to on social media, you would go hang out with them if you had a day and you would see that they're not really who they you think they are. And that would break your heart. You had a poster on their wall your whole life and you wanted to be like them only to meet them and realize that they don't treat their wife anything like you would treat your wife. They don't treat their kids like you would treat your kids. They don't believe the same way and they're very good on camera, but they're not really that way. I'm going to tell you, if you've been around me, I'm exactly who I am right now. And I've learned that I don't want to be anybody who I'm not. I want to be who I am, who I am. And I want to lean into that. Shit. And also I want to tell you something. Okay. Everything that I try to learn or become is to bring value to other people. I've learned that the most satisfying, the most fulfilling thing in this world is not making money. It's bringing value to help someone else in life. And, you know, when I was in sales, my value or my goal was to become really good at sales so that I could take pressure away from the clients. When I sold cars and I was younger and I made a lot of money, it, it wasn't that I felt like selling transportation was what changed people's lives. Being so good at speaking, talking, articulating my words, being close with people um, didn't let people feel the pressure of spending a lot of money. I'm going to explain a, an analogy to all of you and then let's get off this call. Um, when I started selling cars in 1999, um, you could, by the time 2005 had come, you could buy a brand new Chevy Impala on a showroom floor for $15,000, $15,000. That's a $250 payment max. <laughs> You're making a four grand deal at $250 a month. People are like, I want to be at 175 a month. We get them to 250 guys. It wasn't very hard to sell. Was it? <laughs> $250 payments, you make four grand deals, pretty easy, isn't it? Well, then something happened and it was called inflation and manufacturers started raising the price on all these cars. And now a brand new Chevy and Paul on a showroom floor, if they still made them, I don't know if they even do, probably be around 50 or $60,000. You know, guys, just go back 15 years ago, okay? People could have a, a $250 payment for a brand new car on a showroom floor. And today they would have an $800 payment. Cars have gotten a little better. Technology's changed a little bit, but people haven't made that much more money. We have to be really, really good at what we do. People blow their money everywhere. So that's why you gotta be so good that when you sell things, you can pull pressure away from people. You can make, you can make things seem very easy for them to do. And that's also why you'd wanna become a good speaker. So look, I love you guys. I hope today helped you guys a lot. Okay. I know that progress in life is what I live for. The more I learn, the more I feel alive. Here's what I want to tell you. And we'll finish on this social media, building a personal brand. You're going to be on the camera all the time. You're going to be giving people value. You're going to be getting fired up. Everything I taught you today will make you good at doing social media. Hey guys, I just want to tell you you're the true one percenters. You made it till the end of the video. Do me a favor, share it with the friend that wants to go to another level. Make sure you like the video, comment below so I know who you are. Set your notifications and then subscribe to the channel. We got daily sales training videos dropping. I'll see you soon.